Welcome to another episode of Speaking with the Senator. Today we're going to be talking politics, of course. And uh, we have a special guest. Uh, she's a candidate for CD2. And uh, she's uh, very, very um, energetic. And she has a, a great story to tell. And uh, I want to welcome Lily Tang to, to the show. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be here. You're going to be, be a professional at doing this here. You know, you're on <laughs> a whole host of shows. And so I, I, um, I congratulate you for coming on and for running. And for um, I know when I say you have a, you have a passion. And uh, coming from where you came from, which was Communist China? Yes. Uh, to America. Uh, if I could read what it says here. It says uh, that you you uh, love this country, and I fear the country that I, I love is becoming the country that I left. And there are lots of things that are that are going on these days, which is causing you great concern. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why you're running. Correct. And uh, yes. you, you, uh, you you see some parallels as to where you you fled, not fled, but you you came from. And uh, you enjoy the freedoms and the Constitution and the liberties that, that uh, we have here. But they're slowly, progressively eroding. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I think that you started running. I've heard your speeches in the past. And uh, mm -hmm. so welcome to the show. So how's the campaign going? It's uh, going very well. I'm on the one of the three candidates in the primary, mm -hmm. which is uh, happening on September 13th. And, uh, but I, I'm a very unique, non-traditional candidate here, born, raised in communist China, and uh, come here with nothing, and uh, started with debt, could not even speak English, mm -hmm. but uh, I was determined to achieve my American dream. Look, at today, I'm living American dream. Right. Which country can I go to, could not mm -hmm. even speak English, and start with nothing, and Ronnie can run for Congress. I'm right. the first one, actually. I'm the only one in the whole country right now running for U.S. Congress, but the boring communist China and grew up there. Yeah, and, which is a great accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And uh, how how is that resonating with the, with the people that you're running into? Uh, what are you hearing on the campaign trail? Well, that uh, number one concern people have is inflation, gas prices, and the electrical electricity price, and the worry about recession, their jobs, their careers, and and uh, their family, of course. And and but when they found out that I survived the communism, come to America, I love this country, I want to make an impact, and people are very welcome. Mm -hmm. they, they they feel like they can relate to me. And because I told them, hey, I come here with nothing. I was born into extreme poverty. My parents were illiterate workers. You know, we were living on food rationing coupons. But now I came here, um, I raised family with my husband. I started my business. I'm a small business, successful woman working from home. And uh, I'm, I'm doing this because I feel this is my calling. So, so I woke up in this country only after 20 years I came here. I came here in 1988. Mm -hmm. I had to learn English, learn about my new country, and learn about political system, and get rid of all my indoctrination from China. So 20 years of awakening process. But once I woke up, I realized Americans changing. Like they're using some socialist, communist terms and tactics. Here. One of the things that uh, I remember, there was a, an event that was in Hollis and we were talking about the critical race theory mm -hmm. and how that you recognize what, what they're doing. It, it sounds like it's a good thing to some ears as they lo listen to it and they think, well, this must be a good thing to, to make everybody inclusive or whatever. But you, you were talking about it as though this is just another way for communism to or central government see people don't understand that communism really is 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 an elite central government where only the top are, are powerful and, and the voices of the people are are subject to that power structure mm -hmm. and so either a central government or communism and that's I, I relate the two to the same mm -hmm. and it, it's as though the elites end up running what the people mm -hmm. you know and how they're supposed to think and how they're supposed to to live mm -hmm. rather than the other way around this well, is our country the, and we are free people and we tell our politicians how to, to live well or, because of our fa failure of our educational system 
lots of our people who grew up under Obama generation and uh, and, and lots of young people, mm -hmm. but they don't understand that. They they like to have more socialist policies. They rely on government for the solutions and the trust authority. They don't understand the the socialism, the communism. Like you say, those systems actually offer people always get people into the door to buy into them by offering free stuff. They're for the workers. They're for the poor. We're gonna redistribute the wealth. But by the time those elitists gain absolute power, they enslave everybody. Right. So we all become equally poor. That's what had to happen to Chinese. You know, you, you know, 40 million peasants who supported the Mao's revolution were starving to death by his uh, central planning policies. Mm. And lots of people don't know that. They still don't know that in today's China, because one party dictatorship controls all the press, all the media. It's all state propaganda every day. And now they're under Xi Jinping, the, the chairman, like a, it's very, very patriotic and wants to go take over Taiwan. It's always called liberate Taiwan. That's what I was told. And also demonize America right now. They're right. demonize America as a country. And, and even call America a racist country. It's like, a, <laughs> that sounds like a, some of our left media in this country. Right. So I call critical race theory kind of remind me what Mao did. See, Mao used the oppressor versus oppressed classic Marxist theory to divide the people. Right. Then he put the five black classes under oppressor and five red classes under oppressed. Then he gave them to fight each other. So if you are born rich, farmers, landlords, families, you are born black class, you go to struggle sessions and you have to be publicly shamed and uh, criticized and apologized and, mm. and because uh, something you were born with, so you have no control. I saw all that 10 years of chaos and division. 20 million people died during the 10 years cultural revolution. I don't like this kind of identity politics. I right. call that it's a central, it's a hallmark of the Maoism. Communism is to play identity politics. And I was talking, I, I think it was a couple of uh, sessions ago when I was running, uh, an individual came up to me at one of the camp, at one of the polls and he had his camera on me and he said, so tell me what you think about identity politics and uh, basically espouse what you just said, that it basically divides individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you divide individuals, then you can control them. And I, then I turned the question on him. Well, what did you think about, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about identity politics? And, and is this what they're teaching you in school? And he said, yes, and I, and I like it. And I thought, okay, so our, our university systems are, are teaching this and espousing it, but they don't, they're not sharing mm -hmm. the, maybe the full story, the, the potential dangers of uh, dividing uh, individuals and saying, well, you're in this class, you're in this class, you're in this class, and you got everybody fighting with each other. That, and, you know, we, when I grew up, you know, united we stand, divided we fall. And, uh, and the civil rights movement actually, you know, um, Basically, like Dr. King said, now we move forward, we live in a country, people will be judged by their individual content of their character, mm -hmm. but not by their skin color. So we should not look at people, their skin color or gender or race, and uh, we look at, a, you know, what is their character like as an individual? Right. Right. But now with today's cancel culture, with this uh, um, CRT or the DEI, yeah. 6019 project, mm -hmm. social emotional learning, it's all about, I think, uh, to me, indoctrination of our children to demonize America as mm -hmm. a racist country and to make people feel oppressed and they're victims, they should have entitlement attitudes and instead of uh, I feel so lucky to be born American. I'm going to live American dream by working hard, by creating something, you know, out of myself, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, we came here for as immigrants who said uh, we fled our per oppressive country to come here to work extremely hard, get education, and to save, to invest, to start our own business. I'm living American dream. If I could do it, Starting at negatively at 24 years old without even English, without family and friends here, how, how how couldn't everybody do it? And don't blame on some past history happened. Right. You know, so I don't like this identity politics and the people don't understand, but I see the writings on the wall. It is a classic communist um, 
an entity public theory equity trap. I call it equity trap because equity means equal outcome.、Mm -hmm. How could you have an equal outcome without government use force to redistribute, to、right. force quotas, to force lots of things down to our throat? And cancel culture is something you said you did many years ago can come here bite you today. Right. And、uh, that's exactly what Mao did during his Cultural Revolution. You know, when I grew up, there was a little saying: "The government that can give you everything is the government that can, can take, take everything, everything away." away. From you.、Yes. One of the things that I, I I'm mulling over in my mind with all these these culture things, these identity culture and CRTs, these people are are trying to portray or trying to indoctrinate a moral code. That they're developing, so that they can have superiority over your conscience, and they're becoming the arbiters of what is right and wrong,、mm -hmm. and how you're supposed to think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who made them God? That's exactly what happened under Mao's Cultural Revolution. The party chairman Mao decide <clears throat> who should be the black classes. For example, not just rich landowners and farmers, but also rightists,、mm -hmm. county revolutionary, bad influencers. But who define those terms? Who arbitrarily decide?、Uh, you know, they are bad influencers. Party chairman Mao. So, didn't didn't Chairman Mao say, "Hey, I want all the professors to come out and tell me what's wrong with what's going on." This is my own. Yes,、words. my teacher did.、Guess、and then what, what happened? They went to blacklist, go send to the neighbor neighbor camps. Yeah. That's why I wanted to study law in China.、Mm. I went to the one of the top universities after studying very hard to search for truth, trying to establish the rule of law in China. Because my teacher, my favorite teacher, was through. Under the bus, going to labor camps. After he was naive enough to believe the Mao and party to say, "I want to give some feedback for improvement," and they believe that made the one hundred flowers bloom. Remember,、mm. then get them on the blacklist. Yeah, how naive were they, right? That's why today's Chinese don't trust government. You cannot say anything. You get、uh, locked up. When I was growing up, we had to whisper like. Because you don't want people report you to the authorities. So now you're running for Congress. What are you going to bring to the table? I tell people I'm the only one who grew up, born, raised in China, survived communism and socialism. I would be the best person to call out the socialist policies, trying to be pushed by uh, the uh, progressives in the Congress. There are 100 members of the Progressive Caucus. Like Bernie Sanders, AOC,、mm -hmm. they all want the United States to adopt more socialist policies. I will debate them. I will be very happy to debate them and to share my personal stories. That's bad for our people, bad for our country. I don't want our country go down that path. Everywhere they tried, those systems fail miserably. One of the things that I, I thought was really disturbing when. When you went up into Concord during、uh, that presidential elections, and you saw SAU support Bernie Sanders. Yeah, socialist policies. The school union was adopting socialist policies. What、well, Bernie、yes. Sanders never worked a day in his in his life, not one day. He's been、uh, living off of the public.、Uh, Dole, if you will,、uh, on as a as a senator, or, and never worked a day in his life, and now he's going to tell us how to run our country, and then we have the schools that are saying we that's what we want. That's a problem. That's a problem with our school system. That's why I am a、um, you know firm supporter of parental rights and parental control, school choice, freedom, education. I kind of wrote even article about that, and、mm -hmm. um, because uh, I talk about my. Top issue, one of top issues, parental rights. I say parents are losing their rights to exercise control, and our kids are supposed to belong to the state and subject to their indoctrination. And the parents have no rights in China. We are Americans. This is our country. I'm glad to see parents are waking up, especially from the last two years. The school shutdowns. They they saw. Wow, my kids could not go to school for a year, but the rich people could send their kids to private schools. To private schools. But the minority people, poor working class people, 
suffer. Their kids fall behind. That's right. Some kids need the speech therapists now because they could not learn how to speak in the past two years. One of the things is a mask mandate. You know, my opponent actually is、uh, criticizing because、uh, I do support school choice, and the reason I, I support school choice is because there are some kids that that cannot afford to go to private school. They can't afford it. They can't afford what the rich kids do, and、mm-hmm. it's not an attack on the public schools. The public schools serve their purposes. However, if a child is falling through the cracks and they can't afford it because they don't have the money, what's wrong with giving them that opportunity、mm-hmm. to go to a private school that helps that child instead of them becoming、uh, sick because of mental illness because they they feel like they just don't fit in、mm-hmm. and they fall into drugs or whatever and they fall back into into a life of of despondency because. The system failed them. Give them that choice, so that they can learn, and 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 develop, and grow, and be a productive citizen.、Yeah. But there are those that say, "Well, that's an attack on the public schools." Wait a minute, that's not how it works. That's not how it's supposed well, the, to work. Well, the thing is, so、um, if you really talk about public schools, supposed to be local control, the parents control, but it's not today. It's government schools now. It's subject to centralized education all the way from top down,、yeah. and it's from teachers' unions. You don't know even where some of those curriculum come from. You know, CRT, transgenderism, sexualizing our children, and、uh, you know, like destroy girl sports, all that stuff. Where do they come from? You think the parents want them? No, even moderate Democrat don't want them, but they're afraid to speak up. So we we have to tell people: if you love your public school, you can keep it. But the people who cannot be forced into buying this,、right. they need to have a choice. That's what America is about: it, it, it's freedom to choose. So they cannot. We should fund the students, not the public school, just as an entity anyway.、Mm. That's what education is about: it's about our children. Right. Yes. The, the first and primary focus. Is the children? Yes, and they're to to learn constitutionally. It's for them to learn and to、uh, have piety. Did you know that that's in our constitution, the yes, New Hampshire constitution? Yes, they come to teach you, and it's supposed to teach piety.、Mm. Do you know what piety is? Explain to me. Well, piety has to do with、uh, morals. So civics, morals, it, education. It's in our constitution. Yeah, I then, wonder if they're teaching. Piety, rather they're teaching more pronouns rather than math. Yeah, and they are also、uh, teaching that、uh, all the、um, racism, everything is about race now. Everything,、just. yeah. So let's. And how about the white kids who are born white, and、mm-hmm. they're supposed to feel bad about、Being. their association with their families, and they're born white, and we have ninety percent population in New Hampshire are white people. Is that a crazy to demonize that it, many it, people? It will upset some people, no doubt, and I think that it it, it just divides us, and it just you know if you have、it. a wound, and it's just about healed, and you rip that wound open again, it's all it starts all over again, and、yeah. it makes the scar even worse. And instead of letting things heal and letting people、uh, back to loving each other. Right. You're, you're 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 setting people apart. So you're running for Congress. You believe in in parental rights. You believe in school choice. You believe in an open dialogue with with uh, with uh, everyone.、Uh, you know, freedom of speech. Freedom of speech.、Yeah. I know that it's on one of your、uh, top issue too. Yeah. yeah, because I see cancel culture is destroying our civil society,、mm-hmm. where people. Just afraid of speak up the truth. You cannot speak freely. You cannot think freely, and you cannot get to the truth. And that's why we have this brain on our head, we on our shoulder. We're supposed to hey, I listen to you, I listen to him, so I can judge myself. What is the truth? I I go do my own research. Don't even take what I said as the truth. Please do your own research.、Mm-hmm. Then make a well informed decision. I do believe New Hampshire people are independent minded.、Mm-hmm. We have the model: live free or die. And、uh, I, I believe people are asking questions now. I, I just hope that、uh, don't wait too late because if we lose our country as a free country and taken over by socialists and you know communists like whatever globus you call them, we're gonna lose more of our natural rights, our freedom, our private property. You, 
you see this uh, the push for globalism, right? Yeah. And you have uh, world masters who want to tell us how to live, what a car should I drive, and you know, pretty soon how much food you should eat because we might have food shortage. Right. It's not the same America we I came here for, so right. I, I'm not going to let that happen. I think I'm in the way of those people. I, I, I will fight until my last breath. And we appreciate that. And how do people get in touch with your campaign? So I have a uh, um, website, Lily for LilyTongWilliams.com. My issues, my stories, my interviews, you can see I have been consistent for past five years mm -hmm. to educate people about the evils of communism, socialism. So people can check me out to say, oh, she's for real. And then I have a social media um, from a Twitter to Facebook page, Lily for Congress, Instagram and the YouTube channel in English and the Mandarin Chinese both. And that's my beautiful family. That, they're very beautiful and, family. Uh, I, of course, I'm not really objective here, right? Yeah. And uh, they are born Americans, very happy, very lucky. I feel very blessed and uh, very blessed in this country because I met my husband the first night when I came to this country. Mm -hmm. We dated 18 months and uh, got married and now so 32 years later, He's my biggest supporter. He and he's out there in the, in the hall waiting for yeah, us waiting to get for over. Me. <laughs> yeah. And to drive me to another meeting after yeah. this. So I really appreciate you check me out and, mm -hmm. and contact me if you have any questions. I'm not that partisan. I'm all about save our country mm -hmm. and serve the people. I tell people, if you don't agree with me on all the policy, that's okay. We can have conversations. Right. I will listen to you. But let's just not demonize each other. And then let's also put the politics behind us and become a unified. If we unify the country, united as people, there's nothing we cannot solve. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. But, uh, but we need to put a very, very partisan politics behind us. I tell people to trust me because uh, liberty is my North Star. I will not sell out. And uh, I, my slogan is really for liberty, not for sale. I serve the people, not special interests, not the swamp. I have the largest, probably strongest resistance, you know, in the swamp mm -hmm. because of liberty is my North Star. And uh, so check me out. And my another slogan is keep American dream alive. I think all the people who come here as the legal immigrants who live their American dream can identify with me. And also I can win over independence. It's about our country, our people, our children. And, uh, and we all want peace. We all want to be loved and live in freedom and prosperity. But this high inflation, gas prices and every Open so, border. The open border chaos and our fentanyl overdose in our state, they are really hurting us. And the Democrats party, even though they claim they're supposed to represent the middle class and poor, they're not. They're party of elitists now. Has, um, has Mr. Pappas... Uh, Ann Custer. And, oh, you're, are you running against... Against uh, Ann Custer, yes. Ha, but have either Representative Pappas or, or Custer talked anything about the border? I want them to. They should uh, put pressure on Biden now to say our people are hurting. I New haven't Hampshire heard them say people, a word. Yeah. And, and the policy of not to enforce the laws on the books and not to adequately fund ICE and call even ICE people like racist. It's just uh, our left media do not help, okay? The ICE people are the ones who are protecting our, our citizens from sex trafficking. Yes. And that's what's happening over the border. And human trafficking. And human trafficking. Yes. And you saw those 43 people died in Texas yes. in a van. What and wrong message to send to people all over the world? What have oh, they come said? Come here illegally. Have they said anything about this? Either one of those candidates, uh, Custer or Pappas? No. Yeah, they, they don't. They, they also don't go to borders. Yeah. They don't go border checked out. And the thing is, so uh, we are paying for it. And Biden were flying them in and bus them into different places. And, and they don't understand the taxpayers are funding all those bills. And when Trump wanted the five billion dollars to finish the war, they did not give to him. But we got 60 billion to go to Ukraine yeah. to protect Ukraine's border. Does that make sense? And, and this is our country. We need to, you know, really pressure our politicians to be hold them accountable, hold their feet to fire. And this year is a good time to change the leadership in Washington and to send a different message. You send somebody like me who is not going to, 
you know, be funded and supported by lobbyists, special interests, but will serve the people and address the issues they're concerned with. Right. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm not, of course, uh, people think I'm not a very traditional Republican because I'm a woman, I'm minority, I'm people of color. That's okay. We have, have, we have a diversity, we too. We are a big umbrella, and yes, that's, that's, yes. that's a misnormal. And we, that's a minority is a living Democrat Party because right. they have abandoned them, yeah. and their policies are hurting their American dreams, are killing their children's American dreams. So I think that they're waking up and uh, more and more are joining the Republican Party now. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, I appreciate your passion, and I wish you very well. And uh, if you want to support Lily in her campaign, uh, I believe there's a website that that shares that she shared. And uh, if you share her passion, I told you she would be, uh, uh, join her, her campaign and help her and get the message across. Uh, and uh, those that uh, you know, if you have questions, give her a call. Uh, I know that she'll answer them. So until next week, thank you for watching Speaking with the Senator. And Lily, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. I always like to have a conversation like this. It's great. I'm having fun. I'm a happy warrior. So yeah. any, anybody out there want to go to your town halls and meet with you, go to your libraries, please contact me through my website or social media. And I would love to just listen to people. You can be independent, but still want to check me out and vote for me in the primary September 13th. I would really appreciate your support and be a volunteer. Take my yard sign, take a pump card, <laughs> and thank you very much. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 y